Hello, this is The Duke, and I'm here to talk about how I turned from left-leaning to right-leaning politics in 2020. And this is from my UK experience of politics, on politics, and when I'm talking about left-leaning, I'm talking more about the Labour Party, even the Lib Dems, and then now I feel more supportive of the Tory Party, and that's meant to be unpopular. So I'm voicing my... Um, perspective and really how I got to this point within the last maybe four to five months and it's fair to say that um, hearing a different set of voices would help change the narrative where you know one side's evil and one side is compassionate so um, this is my story so I think it's important to pay attention to those who um convert to a different ideology than what they previously heard in the past and to also learn or to listen to people that aren't traditionally leaning to what they're expected to follow that's superficially based on class faith system race you know it took me a while but for the past four to five months my perspective as i said has drastically changed it's egged on playing on the fence on most cases that's where I, I you know i was really built on simply based on not trusting either side a bipartisan system is always going to be set on an agenda you know and to highlight which agenda suits people that need the help and it's the idea that you know left and right is based on rich and poor we've seen evidently especially in the UK that that's not always the case there's an agenda and we may hear rhetoric coming from both sides but rhetoric that is emphasized and labeled on right-leaning politics and I'm gonna really break it down to the extent that people would really have to come to terms with the lies we've been fed and we right we just end up accepting so i'll just get personal growing up as a young black male in inner city east london of a working class household then moving to a a north london neighborhood in my an emerging middle class household you know my family well you know climbing up the ladder in terms of you know income and aspiration being the oldest as well allowed me to really be exposed to how my parents sort of you know worked their way up some way somehow and then realizing that there's a sort of a different set of rules when you're a person who does you know climb up the economic ladder and then moving to a county town for university you know outside of london outside of our city bubble further exposed me to a to different livelihoods from East London, North London, then a you know county borough from what I'm accustomed to. It helped shape my overwhelming sense, right, of compromise and a rounded understanding of different perspectives that you know people hold, especially the people I surrounded myself with. I've been a person that enjoyed debates and a dialogue, discourse that is essentially based on having different views and seeing, you know, where you're coming from and figuring out what you meant by that and why I disagree with it, why you disagree with me. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it helps, it stimulates a sense of uh, 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 compromise and understanding that, hey, no side is better than the other. And it's it's clear, I'm going to make sense of it because some people might just feel like, The other side is the complete antagonist. But in general, dialogue and debate, you know, really helped shape how I think of it. It helped me grow. Having friends that may identify on an opposite side to mine allowed me to clear up my perception. So that's me emphasizing, right? I had friends who were conservative thinkers they might value certain things and it's telling that today's liberals quote unquote liberals today's liberals tend to create narratives that paint the other 
as a complete antagonist to their dream of a better society more often than people would like to admit it there's a lot of false narratives going around circulating uh, around this idea the other side is the misogynist the other side is the establishment <laughs> can you imagine the other side are racist the other side are xenophobic the other side have all these narratives painted on them to an extent and in fact to us in a within a certain era that was true but this is modern britain so i'm speaking from a perspective living in the uk this is modern britain what are the values what are the issues we are dealing with today that people want to focus on? What are the values one side holds that the other does not? And that's what where I really drew the line and I started to understand that it's a time standards, uh, a time based situation. Today's labor you know today's labor government was different from the labor government in the 90s tony blair's labor government yeah uh, gordon brown's labor government today's labor government is completely different to what i would have supported back in the day and i, I would let you know that i've been for example active on social media and when i say active i'm referring to being uh cognitively aware of the social discourse that is like printed itself on these digital platforms especially on twitter twitter where i've been exposed to and bombarded by social content revolving around politics the inner workings of you know the sports industry the entertainment industry and social justice issues global issues but 10 years ago young people you know in our 20s or teenagers that weren't so exposed to the local national international daily dealings of uh, uh issues could exist in their bubble right of blissful existence and just a normal life within their own sphere but when of course major issues happen everyone can see in the news we're exposed to that but what i'm talking about today's issues now is that in comparison to the past where we're only driven by what we see within our you know family school work neighborhood nowadays we see the more passive issues thrown into the timeline social media can be addictive right and with that constant use and um, constant um, exposure young people especially are bombarded with a general the general sphere of politics and social problems you know sexism racism uh, uh xenophobia all of these things we see we see images we see videos bombarded on us on a daily basis forgetting that we live in a global society where you know seven billion people on the planet we see issues happen on a day-to-day -day basis and we don't take to the fact that these are case by case scenarios we're not living in you know colonial era we, we that i'll get to that point another time but um that's just me giving a general perspective right that at the end of the day it's it does benefit young people especially uh, being exposed to the social discourse discourse of today's era but we can definitely see there's a hypersensitized notion there's a hypersensitized um uh, agenda and it, it causes people to become desensitized to these cases you book i've become so numb because i feel like compared to my age mates compared to my peers i have been a, more aware and active on social media in terms of um uh, being um, curious on oh what's today's issues and you know for for years since i've been in secondary school since i've been let's say I'll put age on it. 16. I've always been aware of these social issues, but I recognize that I'm seeing a global perspective. I'm not just dealing with what would have been within my community or within uh, national um, um, experience, 
but I'm seeing things in America, I'm seeing things happening in Brazil, in Israel, in Palestine, in China, and all these issues are all sort of being thrown into my um, lenses and it, it, it throws people off, not realizing that it can numb you to a reality that we actually live. Numb you not to just um, make you less empathetic but numbs you to the point where you don't realize you know what's normal in your day-to-day -day life and what's you know happening to a certain extent in another reality in, an, in another area of the world where it's part of us our existence and it, it, it shapes how we think and it's actually scaremongering and it happens on both sides of politics there's a scaremongering tactic and it forces people to have a stronger agenda, a, 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 an agenda where they devalue any reason to say, hey, look, it's, it's not that bad or, oh, we can see it to a certain extent, but people are, are forgetting about thresholds, about what is offensive anymore. I will delve into that again uh, another time, but this is a general um, commentary on my my political views and how it's changed in the past few years and drastically in, in in the past few months i've been woke right the yeah, quote unquote woke to the experiences faced by marginalized groups i understand from a personal position what it means to view the world from a sensitized agenda as i've been saying and now understand how other moderate thinkers view these these issues, even though from a you know they might come from an opposite side of the politics, they still understand what's going on. There's this false perspective that only today's liberals, right, quote unquote liberals, and I always emphasize on today's liberals because it's it, it, behaviors, political agendas change, and the idea that. Um, those who were fighting for civil rights in another part of the world or even here in the UK are the same, you know, uh, have to come with the same type of energy, the same um, 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 topic and discourse that we have to face right now to the same amplitude. I think it's unfair and it's um, disrespectful to the plight that existed in the past. So that's why I always emphasize on today's liberals. And to be honest, I would I, I do notice that a lot of uh, people my age who might um, identify as conservative also grew up in a, a family that were conservative too. So I, I always tend to see it as this. Um, ho however you were brought up um, and then how you identify now will make me consider what you've been exposed to so a lot of the times that's how people jump to conclusion that oh you're just like that because that's how you grew up i can say the same thing from for how i grew up or how my friends who could label themselves left-leaning or socialist how they grew up how, how they perceive things it's maybe through the natural indoctrination indoctrination is, isn't always bad but the natural indoctrination of uh young people into taking a side based on what they've been exposed to but more on how they've been brought up so even the richest uh, teenage the, 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 the teenager that was brought up in a, the wealthiest affluent uh, family could have quote-unquote liberal views yet the agenda the narrative is that most people who are well off tend to be conservative well, the case, that's not always the case. That's not always true. To an extent is how people are uh, brought up to, to, to believe so-and-so, the, the rhetoric, quote-unquote rhetoric, that they have heard over and over again that reinforces how they think and feel now about certain issues. Especially when you're in your 20s, you feel like you feel justified, you're, you're well more well-informed, but to a certain extent, you've been indoctrinated to believe what you believe. Just like how, how I have. 
and what is more um apparent is th those who push away or shy away from discussing or engaging with people who, who hold a different view to them so when i see young people who debate and argue about what's right or what's wrong or what's politically unjust they don't sit there and wonder how they think and what do they consider to to be the best solution for this topic for this scenario instead they're like look i'm more compassionate than you obviously so i can't listen to anything you're gonna say because you're probably racist you're probably this you're probably that probably ignorant but they never sit there are a lot of people who never sit down to wonder what's the um, thought process of this particular person there are ignorant people on both sides they're ignorant people on the right i am clear on that there are people who i believe who are too ignorant that they shouldn't really even involve themselves in politics because they just mask it with sort of a legal perspective where oh i believe this is this is right um I don't want any immigrants in this country so I'm justified in following the Tories because that's what they believe when that's not the case that's not the truth you know neither um, political um, the, the well the major political parties Labour um, Tories Lib Dems even the Green Party and then we can set aside the UKIPs and the Brexit, um, Brexit party and you know, well, Brexit party to a certain extent they've legitimized themselves but the UKIP party and the BNP remember remember that one where we can see that rhetoric play a part but you can't then mask it as that's the conservative party's agenda too when you definitely know the rhetoric is not there certain individuals have that sense of um um, values but it's not the established agenda so people just paint the whole brush on right-leaning politics is all evil there's this false perspective right that only today's liberals are the most compassionate and com and and compassion comes with having the best interests for the common citizen the truth is self-acclaimed saviors especially those that come from better means upper middle class liberals believe they know what's best for those like myself a uk young black male from humble beginnings the truth is i was fed a lie myself a lie that attempted to convince me that there's no you know uh, that I, I don't i can't take responsibility for how I live to a certain extent how my life is in most part the system has to be blamed for whatever wrong I may face that the political system of today is responsible for my livelihood it's fair to have this concept to an extent but we have to be honest that's where I draw the line why do people avoid making comparisons right with the experiences that we live in the UK that I live in the UK in comparison to others who in you know for example in the third world, world countries where the system is not built for them where um but yet their perspective is that dependency is a privilege to an extent not an overall right that alone you know being you know I, I can I'm gonna fall into that even more in a different way. I don't wanna make this any longer, but I've you know, to a certain extent, people from ethnic minorities, I'm gonna really delve into that, right? Tend to be conservative. They tend to have naturally conservative values within the family, within the household. That you can't just then you know, um pretend as if <laughs> you just expect every one of us to be left-leaning that the case is, is that a lot of um uh, migrant families you know first generation second generation um, um people of the uk tend to have left-leaning views once we're here once we are rooted in this country right because our parents are here migrants who worked and so on and we're here um that we have to have liberal views because of course the migrants are you know protected by the liberals and you know 
while the right leaning um, um, pol uh, political sphere are against every outsider and foreigner and that's not the truth because it's, uh, to, be, to, to an extent you have to realize it's the same in almost every other country go to South Africa people are saying they are labeling the most xenophobic people in Africa right now and we know they've had the past just 22 decades ago of apartheid, the apartheid era the civil rights movement and now they're attacking Africans as we speak you know they're, they're, they're marginalizing other groups that look just like them there, there's literally around the world this idea of left-leaning and right-leaning politics is, is almost race-based and all oh, the western um, establishment is against everything third world brown and black and that's not the case because yes ethnic minorities tend to end up leaning, leaning to the right but if you have to can you have to really point to what and contextualize the groups because it becomes lazy when you ignore the fact that Indian migrants tend to become more conservative their children become more conservative than let's say Pakistani migrants who because of you know coming from a working class uh, migration set tend to be um, aligned the same way as a, what a working class white Brit would you know be you know the factory worker the so-and-so and they will tend to move to a labor agenda the labor party it's always about specific groups you have economic migrants you have refugees you have um, just people who are looking for better means and the idea that every one of these groups tend will tend to lean to the left just based on that fact alone is lazy because there's more to it a lot of these groups run away from socialist leaning governments yet having conservative values running away from these establishments that essentially take away your your rights and responsibilities and your 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 the the, 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 the natural competitiveness that comes with being a, a person that is ambitious is being stripped away by these governments that sort of claim to um, um, be the in best favors of the people when we know there's a lot of corruption in these countries so a lot of the time these migrant populations would see through the smoke screen that there's one side of the party that is more, more in, interested in you working for yourself and reaching it to a certain higher standard and making sure your children have a better high you know high standard of living than than to just be you know have your hand out for help i will delve into that even more in another video but this is a uh, this is just and again i'm really i could go on in a tangent so let me not digress um we have to be aware that politics to its core revolves around looking for solutions that may affect those in need and when social media bombards people with discourse and troubles around the world there's an eagerness to sort out a solution political agendas set a bar on which you know which issues which groups need prioritizing but I've noticed people on my timeline, on social media, people in my circles aren't set on solutions at, uh, at times, but are now experts on reiterating problems without solutions. You know, just going back nostalgia, history, and what what troubles you know this society has caused. You know, the British Empire, and you know, I I get that that you know the Akala agenda. You know, I, I love Akala. I listen to how he sort of brings up learning from what history has led us to and learning from that and you know teaching us what to do you know how to you know be more empathetic and so and so but to a certain extent people aren't setting themselves for solutions people aren't recognizing that hey where this is a modern era now what can we do to empower ourselves you know i'm going to make a video on you know empowerment group empowerment where you know if there's a marginalized group what can they do you know while fighting for justice and so and so what can they do for themselves within their communities instead of just um fighting for to a certain extent 
praising anarchy and let's break down the whole system that will solve something now did that <laughs> did it work in so different countries around the world that form of disruption doesn't always work especially when it's all emotionally driven political agendas set a bar right for example when we highlight what is you know racism in today's society there are people especially on twitter blue tick twitter you know these are generally writers journalists that you know you know advocates that rightfully stir up debate when it's necessary but many take it a step further by uh desensitizing what racism looks like and what i mean like nowadays today you know people don't have a threshold for what we should consider racist name calling what type of name calling you know um targeting what 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 when you say targeting what do you mean like what appropriating and we need context where where do we draw the line cancel culture has really shaped this idea you know to desensitize people into not knowing where we draw the line cancel culture started from exposing those who've played you know their in you know on their integrity throughout their career on you know in the media and whatnot and get caught out for their past comments but that exposure that behavior has you know grown toxic nowadays evidently it's been burning those who use that same rhetoric you know for example justin trudeau the um social justice um president of canada is it prime minister or president i'm not sure justin trudeau was caught out <laughs> for for the blackface thing I, I would love to make that a video on that too but that was a messy scenario where i'm telling you these tactics will burn you fire and final fire and fire will just make more fire you will just burn both sides of the spectrum in terms of who is more compassionate than you and who is the antagonist and who is the devil's advocate because everyone has a set of troubles and mistakes we can't play dumb anymore where is where do we draw the line but what do these social media platforms also do is create an echo chamber essentially set on the type of people we follow who our online mutual friends are their political leanings and you know your political leanings tend to be similar you're more likely to associate with people from the same background as you naturally there's a comfort in doing so you know you're more likely to you know if you're a football fan you'll have more likely to have more football fans if you're from love of music love of music if you're ethnically you know south asian ethnically east asian um white british white swedish uh canadian british all of this black you know you you will tend to have people within your digital circle associated with you and so your feed your timeline is almost fixed on consuming that same type of uh set of values so um naturally there's a comfort in doing so that's an echo chamber and that can be detrimental to people's psyche to young people's psyche because then you're set on believing that what you've seen within your sort of uh taste taste in music taste in your fact that I, that's when i notice my what is detrimental is i i love my music the music genres that i listen to you know r&b rap music hip-hop but then i've always been intrigued to understanding how others who don't might not listen to my collection of music why haven't they it's, it's like who wouldn't have heard um mary j blige you know album like some sometimes i wonder like maybe i'm missing out maybe i don't need to expose myself to other sets of uh, music and they need to hear, hear me out but everyone's stuck to an extent in their own echo chamber and it used to be by choice but now it's almost being set because of the aglo rhythm of um um the internet and how companies are set on you know the type of um 
adverts we see and you know the videos we watch it's all focused and it's all um, compacted into one lens into one tunnel vision and it's detrimental to us this is coming from a personal perspective right i've been living within my own set of values values that are mostly mine but are also projected by the feed that i get that i consume even when we research things we create a lens when we research politics we create a lens a narrative that can cloud our judgment because i would i noticed that once i read a, an article last year that was so and so and so or once i read all the comments i made last year or two years ago that was on so and so and now i look back i'm like why would i write that 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 i get i was making a point good point there but it was driven by a certain narrative that was almost focused and you know uh, on one ideology that i don't hold anymore and it's scary to think that there are people out there who are stuck on that there and i felt justified back then and it, it felt right but i couldn't take full blame because i felt i was only exposed to a point of view that wasn't was unshaken it was comforting you know to an extent people are comfortable labeling those that should in their mind agree with them but th they don't um when people have a political conviction where one side may be benefiting or favoring their interest at heart but because they're on that spectrum of you know i could agree with someone on the other side of the political spectrum but because they're on the other side it, it has to be that they're the enemy and it's a, an enemy's ploy even when the the politician is doing something in my favor i can't trust it it's fair to over you know always you know take a step you know be on the fence let's see the results till later but we, we live in a scaremongering society everything can't be trusted and so and so to the extent that it is detrimental it, it purges my need for optimism my need for for setting goals and looking ahead and i'm gonna go into a great example of that which is brexit and what we should really be looking forward to post brexit and instead people are living in this nostalgic idea that we would turn back because this is a complete disaster but i am gonna dive, delve into that another time fair enough um when a certain demographic or a certain individual uh, someone that can relate to to me but is on the other side of the political field it confuses the narrative me how can i as a black person favor the conservatives you know how 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 is that possible and to, to an extent people can be more confused by me favoring right leaning politics in the uk now because they may know like i have friends who know how i viewed things for years some people who are black ended up maybe growing up in a conservative family or a conservative household so people are like oh they're just clouded they're, they don't know anything they're you know they're <laughs> they're lost but for me i've seen to, to an extent i've seen the light so people are more confused why would i of all people pick the racists why would i of all people pick the, the evil side <laughs> who's paying me <laughs> um it's ridiculous to an extent it's ridiculous but i get it because i was there that's why it, it, it's for me the people i've engaged with online they are more attentive to what i have to say than someone else who's on the same political spectrum I, i've taken now because people have seen me grow and change on the timeline so now it's like how did that happen and then when i start to explain and they realize that i'm still saying almost the exact same you know thing and step by step 
what my goal is as a you know young person as a person of color in the uk what do i want to see happen in my community what do i want to see happen um, for, for anyone who might struggle or, or be marginalized they realize that for me to take that stance now be more right-leaning and be more tory um more of a tory advocate why would i take the enemy side and then they start asking they start dialoguing with me and a lot of the time a lot of the time i would say 70 percent of the time those same people ignore me oh he doesn't know what he's saying but they don't they disrespect me because they're like they've seen me grow or change my perspective so it's like it doesn't make sense to them but they can't argue with it right now because a lot of the time most people aren't politically driven they have views they are empathetic when they see a case on on tv about a politician doing so and so because of their um, political agenda they just straight away think that that's the evil man and that's the angel you know it's it's never we're not reading into it i've gotten to the point where i'm um, i'm re i'm listening to almost every um parliament briefing per week because i'm that into politics now i'm i understand that there's more to the policies the bills that they pass it's not always cotton dry establishment versus society there's more to it and so people acknowledge where i'm coming from now because they've seen my perspective and the fact that i'm a black person like you know where you know if someone a complete stranger started speaking to me they can easily brand me as a coon or uncle tom but someone who has seen me throughout my time on social media just just friends who i've spoken to they listen to me more so that's why it's very important to see rep representation even though it doesn't matter to an extent it doesn't matter but someone who comes from a different um, background in terms of upbringing imagine a white working class brit you know say that they voted tory because of so and so people would listen to them because like why would you do so and maybe there's a reason to that so it to be honest it's unfair it's sad that a lot of people who do vote conservatives keep keep it quiet because a lot of the time they don't want to be judged and i think people who come from a perspective that is considered more left-leaning should be more outspoken so that's what i'm doing more of i feel like i am obliged to because then people who were as blinded to the facts as i was about what right-leaning politics meant in the uk specifically um would be open to it now as i am to myself it was an independent development but i feel like just by discussing it i have three friends i'd speak to almost every week we have a group chat you know voice chat um and we engage we talk about life and whatnot you know and then we talk speak about politics and then they hear me out and it's like none of them you know it's not like they disagree with me but they're hearing me out it's not they agree with me they just they're just hearing me out because you know where is this guy coming from but it helps to be that voice and i'll continue to make commentary on the, the, these cases even more subscribe tune in more uh let me carry on on this um, basis so why did i become more right leaning you know it's taken me years to to have this eureka moment but um not what normally happens right um a black labor supporter and a black conservative could be asking for the same end result for their identity for their, their for community for whatever it, it's normally based on empowering as i said those with less empowering the marginalized empowering the youth they both have that agenda the black labor supporter the black conservative supporter both want that solution but the discourse is set on one end to work towards that and the other is to keep the sentiments i feel like what, what every black tory that's everyone who, who's listening now if you're you know ethnic minority even if you're white just watch um list um i'm gonna drop a list down on this um, um video for all the tory um ethnic minorities in, in in cabinet right now and just 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 
check each every single name there's about nine mps who are black and there's about a dozen who are asian who are in the tory um party and who represent the constituency just read up on their information where they're coming from how they grew up not every one of them is an etonian an etonian is essentially kids who are you know who were brought up in a private school it was essentially part of the elite working um upper or upper middle class and you expect that they you know, should think like every white tory you know upper class snob whatever quote unquote people would call these people but if you just look at every single one kemi budden buddenick bomi or falemi um i'm gonna list down the names in the description below i'm just sort of babbling on what i'm what i'm saying is when you read up what a black tory member want what their solution you know what they hope um you know the narrative would would change to become is that they recognize that they want the exact same thing of you know someone from the same ethnic group wants for their group but to an extent we are british to an extent we have to acknowledge that group think is not always necessary because there are people in the same position as us who look white who look asian who look you know who are foreign born who are native born working class middle upper middle class small business owners these these are people with needs too so to an extent we have to acknowledge almost in an to an, a national front that we are british we live here we pay our taxes we want the better for you know for, for this you know for the society we live in we are a global citizen but we pay our taxes here you know we want the best for people who live around us our neighbors our, our relatives our friends you know we strive for better the fifth largest economy in the world and uh, you know there's poverty people will say america is so great there's a lot of homeless people in america too so it's like we want to make find solutions in our community in british in in our british you know livelihood if we don't like it here we could leave right but we are here so what what's best for everyone who you know either looks like us or who lives around us it, it that's what should you know remain the focus i feel like black labor supporters tend to focus on nostalgia and to reiterate decades old views you know the idea that yes there were there were Tory members who said if you vote Labour, if you want a black na neighbour or something like that. You know, the racist slogans used back in the 70s and 80s. But we are living in this era. Modern Britain represents all of us. You know, native born, born, foreign born, if you're a resident, if you're a citizen. What is best for all of us? What is best for our economy? We want what's best for, you know... To, to, to for us to thrive we don't need all these food banks what can we do to reduce that what can we do to reduce poverty to reduce ho ch um, child homelessness to reduce um reduce crime what can we do as a collective we can't keep on using our parfide era narratives to fuel our modern day goals black brits we only we make up 2.5 million that's about um three percent of the overall uk population if we want a political agenda or plight for just us i think that's very selfish if you feel like you want to be more um racialized or i uh, play on identity politics then for someone who is you know african and then others who are you know afro-caribbean as well the idea is that you live here you live here as a british citizen what do you want for you your family your neighbors you're more likely to be ethnic minorities too 
where would you like to live in the UK? What would you like to do in the UK? What would you like? What's what's best for you? What's best for your family? What's best for your children? What's best for your neighbors? What's best for your your community? And your community is not always racialized. It's not. We can't continue to play on identity politics. David Lammy, Diane Abbott, or you know all this rhetoric. What is best? for our community here in the UK but for now I've set the record straight to you know my my personal you know political perspective has evolved over time and that's just natural but for example for instance uh, people who you know tend to be so fixed on what they've been essentially brought up in that they're not ready to read into it a lot of most of the time I, I'm convinced people aren't that involved in politics they just use the same talking points they've heard the more you know um huge had advocates are you know those you know major liberal advocates in your social circles who tend to talk on politics they tend to feed these people the same rhetoric right they and ignore that oh there's a different perspective so people most people are not involved and so they just take on the same agenda they've heard from someone who is more passionate so that's where i come in where i say i'm more as passionate as they are and i'm gonna give you a perspective that you need to hear too and then you can consider which side to take because i've had that i've had that with my group of friends the past few months one person is a lot more polarized than me and as long as we've engaged and you know butted their heads on what's you know right what's wrong what what you know direction we should take as a country as a you know as a people my other friends are listening and they're taking it in and that's what matters having a different um voice in the room having a different perspective in the room i come from someone who was more left-leaning and now is right-leaning why is that and that's where we engage that's where we dialogue you know i'm not a typical tory member i i don't consider myself a member as yet but i i of course i i lean more I lean more into the you know conservative values and i believe to a huge extent ethnic minorities west africans you know uh, afro caribbeans to an extent to are to have conservative views but it's almost purged because of the atmosphere they uh, assume um they have to combat in the uk it's not the same and i'm gonna make another video on Sort of american and western politics around the world and just recognizing that it's, it's it's to a degree very different and a very important point i, I make before i end this is how people would claim that the conservative party are racist you know oh like owen jones a very popular um commentator um on politics in the uk conservatives are very racist so why you know they've, they've had a history of racism so why would you support them that's a good question but then we can look in, 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 in over across the pond the democrats are you know are branded as the liberal left the the progressives when they've had a history of racist rhetoric supporting the clan going against the union yet they are the essentially the the, the, the black collective in america that make up 40 percent 14 percent of america they adamantly vote for the democrats you know the democrats that you know voted in obama as for, uh, for president while the republicans were the ones who fought against um antebellum slavery in america yet they're seen as more right-leaning can you see how history changes for them but for for, for some reason how it wouldn't can't change for us you know we have to brand the same group the same party the same way and I'm not saying we can't have that conversation. We have to, but we have to be honest. That's why my voice can, I can help play that part too. I feel that we need a lot more young people in, involved in politics because I can honestly say most of us aren't until we get to a certain point. Most people aren't that involved in politics, but they do take surface level rhetoric to the core rather than let's read into it but anyway that's all i've got for you for now that's the 
<laughs> a very broad commentary i'm ready to make more videos on my point of view um this is duke thanks for listening hope you comment i want to hear your thoughts on this matter if maybe you disagree that's fair i can have more i'm 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 into dialogue i don't block i don't do any of that shenanigans when it comes to uh, sharing different views i want to hear i want to engage with people i want to you know hear uh I, I, i've heard i've seen a different perspective i'm giving you mine so if you want to tune in for more just subscribe and um leave a comment and let's hear what everyone has to say about it thank you very much this is the duke good day